<laughs> hey, Javi, 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 hermano, I'm just kidding, dude. It's fine. But we will have to talk about Mourinho. Also, get us to meet him. Let's bring him on the pod, too. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would be a lot quieter if he was on the pod. I'm quiet. I don't think I'd be as mouthy. Yeah. Good. But yeah, sorry. Sorry for the big digression on who's no, the no, dick. No, no, no. But you guys can vote also who's the biggest dick. Who's the biggest on Mourinho. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it on a Twitter poll. Why not? Yeah. So anyway, that game was absolutely awful. Nothing happened. So I apologize for anyone I kind of turned on to that game. But that put Tottenham again um, top on goal difference. Their goal difference is looking crazy. Their defence, they've only conceded nine goals. Obviously, with the Mourinho side, you kind of expect this. But they're looking very, very solid. Very hard to beat. Just in time for Arsenal to turn up. But anyway, we're going to move on. The other game that caught my eye this weekend was... Actually, Aston uh, was Leeds against Everton. Now, Everton have, after that really incredible start to the season... They've now won one game in one game in six, and they've drawn one. So they're now like lost four, drawn one, won one, right? And all of a sudden, kind of Everton seem to be reverting back to their league form of normal seasons, where flatter to deceive a little bit, inconsistent. Uh, Ancelotti is looking a little bit more worried than he was a couple of weeks ago. But I actually wanted to talk about Leeds. Now Leeds have are averaging the highest shots on goal in the league per game. Like Bielsa, I feel like they are the best team to watch in the league. They're just the best team to watch. High octane, running, pressing, 88th minute, they're still sprinting. Calvin Phillips is one of the most exciting English youngsters about at the moment. He's the kind of metronome in midfield, just does everything very well, the jobs that no one else likes to do. They are such a great team to watch. Against Arsenal, they should have battered us. They hit the post three or four times. And against Everton, they again looked really impressive. Now, being a newly promoted team, they're going to drop points. They're going to lose games. But when they get it right, it is incredible. And that was the other game that I really enjoyed this weekend. Really enjoyed it. How do you see Leeds at the end of the season? What would be... Uh, I don't know. How, can, how do you see them at the end of the season? I think they'll be comfortably mid-table. And I think, like... For a newly promoted team, regardless of the name, for a newly promoted team, that is a very good season. I think maybe pushing to top half would be a very good season. The thing that all the pundits are talking about as well is like the kind of Bielsa burnout, right? The second half of the season, because the football is so intense, because it's so like straining on the body, that in the second half of the season, they tend to fade away. But I feel like they've got a kind of bigger squad now and they're starting to look at home in the Premier League. I think... Mid-table to top half would be very good for Leeds. And absolutely no Arsenal Tottenham preview from you, Rory? You, you okay. want to discuss that? Come on. Come I get on. a feeling got... it's going to come up later. If I can quickly talk about... Quickly can I rant about it. Arsenal now? Can I rant yes, about you can. Arsenal? This is the time, dude. It's Look, 6.39 and right next to it, it says it's Rory's ranting time. There you go. Okay. Go. So, this weekend was so difficult. Not only have we now lost three, go- three games at home in a row, only scoring one goal. I love My... the pause after, uh, after only scoring one goal. Silence. Yes, continue, yeah. please. This and that was scored, our Tottenham fans want to hear. That was scored by our centre-back, our new centre-back, who is now our second top goal scorer with a massive two goals, right? That absolutely sums up our season, right? I was messaging the boys during the game and Wolverhampton uh, or Wolves scored a goal, 1-0. And the first thing I sent was, there's no way we're scoring two goals tonight. We've lost the game. The second the team scored one, I thought it's game over. And now this is something that has been coming at Arsenal for years. We left Highbury and this was to dine at the top table of European football. This was going to be the thing that put us financially on the map that put us fighting with the Real Madrids, with the Barcelonas, etc. Since we've moved to the Emirates, we have had zero money. We've also had awful recruitment, right? We have spent quite a lot of money on terrible players. If we go through some of the transfers that we've had, I was looking at our transfer windows, right? Quickly, 1617, we spent 90 million, right? On three players, Xhaka, Mustafi, and Perez. Wow. 90 million, right? 
Two of those players, you could say, are absolutely symptomatic of all the problems at Arsenal in Xhaka and Mustafi, as in they're both really inconsistent, love a mistake. I don't know, just I don't like either of them. And Perez was sold after a year, despite when I saw him play, he actually looked quite active. So, he scored a goal, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah, he scored one. That's enough to get in our side, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, <laughs> things like this that sums up the recruitment that has been at the club for years and now what has happened is we have a squad of players that are almost the type of player we want it's not the player we want it's the second name on the list it's the third name on the list it's not our top target it's okay we can't get in because we're not in the Champions League so we'll get this one instead and that is what this squad is now it is a collection of second choices bar Aubameyang and Gabriel and Partey when he's fit which I'll get into. The, <laughs> this You're going to get into a lot this of things. It's a squad of second choices. And now Arteta is looking at this squad and going, oh, right, last summer he tried to sell all of them and shock, nobody wants to buy Mustafi. Nobody wants to buy Socrates. Nobody wants to buy Xhaka. So we have to wait either for their contracts to run out or sell them at cut price, which again means we've got no money. So it's this vicious cycle that we've got ourselves into it's like a dog that bites its own tail right exactly and it's just at the moment we need patience this is going to take time if we sack Arteta now like so if this game at the weekend which I'm absolutely shitting myself about if guys we, you can't see Rory's face he just literally put the back of his hand on his forehead and removed all the sweat that he's forming <laughs> if, that's how nervous the yeah. guy feels If we lose this game, there's going to be so much pressure on Arteta, and you could argue rightly so. But if they sack him after this, what do we do then? The squad is still the same. This squad have not turned up for four managers now. They got Wenger sacked. They got Emery sacked. They were awful for Freddie Lundberg. And now they've, after a promising start, they've been shite for Arteta. And they were promising at the beginning under Emery. So you can see these trends forming in the squad and in the characters. The characters who do fight, we've got rid of. Genduzi, who he might be, a, well, he is a mouthy prick, but he fights, he's positive, he puts energy in. We bin him off to hurt her and go, no, thank you. We'll have Xhaka. Like, we'll have Sabayos who falls over every time someone goes within six feet of him. Like, it, it's... The personalities in the squad are just wrong, and I'm sick of them. I'm absolutely sick of them. And quickly, before we move on, Thomas Partey, injured injured for three weeks in his entire career, right? Comes to Arsenal, plays two games, injured for three months. What the f*** are our doctors doing? What are our physios doing? This guy is in perfect physical shape. He steps foot in London Colney, and he's injured for three months. It's going to be the weather, man. It's honestly, it is... Baffling. And now we have to face Tottenham when they are looking the best they've looked in years. And I can all week, you know why I slept terribly on Sunday night? Because I could see I could see Mourinho's face in the post match conference. Right? I could see his face <laughs> going It's so funny to think of you not being able to sleep because <laughs> Mourinho creeps in your dreams and tells you, Rory, I, honestly, we are gonna do this. I would we're gonna, not we're gonna beat Arsenal once again. So easy. No, right? I'm gonna claim what he's gonna say, right? I'm gonna say the exact okay. phrase he's gonna say. You've heard it here first. There you go. Mourinho post game press conference. What is he gonna say? He's gonna say something along the lines of It's nice to see the change in times. Tottenham used to be the underdogs, but now Arsenal are. Because it both says that Arsenal are now shit, and it bigs up the great job that he has done. That is what he's going to say when they beat us 1-0, because he, do, he still doesn't dare attack against us. Against you have heard it here first. Is that a wrap on our Bastard, Rory? done. I can't. <laughs> I'm done. Do, do we have any more Premier League topics to cover? I don't think so. I've forgotten all the others. They've gone out in the head. They right. were written down, but that's all that's been in my head since Monday. Do drink some water, Rory. I'm going yes. to take our listeners to the Serie A real quick. So the first thing, the first game that we recommended our listeners to watch was Napoli-Roma. It was indeed a spectacle. 4-0 win for Napoli, who were rocking an Argentina-themed kit in honor of Diego Armando Maradona. Insigne scored, and of course, he was very teary. I'm sure the guy has met Maradona before, and it was just a beautiful spectacle to see. I just want to quickly say that shirt is, was straight away put on my list in my notes app of shirts to buy. 
That no, Argentina yeah. Napoli shirt looks sick. It yeah, looks so good. Napoli are not renowned for having sick kits, but yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a sick kit. And in yeah. fact, they used it only for one game. But yeah, it was beautiful. And Napoli, man, Napoli are actually a very fun team to watch. Very free-flowing attack. They're very good at building from the back. I don't know how many people would have guessed that actually Gattuso would turn out to be a good manager, but it looks like he actually is. Well, again, just, yeah, quickly, this is something that really surprised me, that Gattuso is actually, seems like a very good manager. He won the Coppa Italia with them, right? He did well with AC Milan, as far as I'm aware, until they got rid of <laughs> yeah, him, yeah, right? Yeah. I feel like, yeah, he's a player who you wouldn't think of as very... Um, erudite and charismatic maybe and like well clear, definitely charismatic but not like yeah. yeah definitely charismatic but i just because of the position he played in the field i mean yeah. or the way he played it looked like a dog that had lost its owner and he was biting all the other dogs in the dog park you know maybe because of that i didn't picture him to be the but you see then it's funny because like cambiasso Everybody was like, the day Cambias retires, he's going to become a football manager. What? No, he's doing other things and he's doing fine. While Gattuso, to many people's surprise, turned out to be a decent manager. So if you want to see some good, fun football, make sure you also look at Napoli. Roma got absolutely battered for nil. They had no saying in that game. And now the big question for our listeners, and I have the question too. The, I have the answer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have the I have the answer too. The big question is, who relies the most on their star? Is it AC Milan on Ibrahimovic? Is it Juventus on Cristiano Ronaldo? Or is it Inter on Lukaku? Tick tock, tick tock. Now bro. I said to you, my first impression was that it might be Lukaku or Inter because I only ever see. It feels like I only ever see him score, but that's not the right answer. That's not the right answer. The right answer is uh, Juventus on Cristiano Ronaldo, ladies and gentlemen. So let's start from AC Milan and Ibrahimovic. AC Milan rely on Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic can even be on the bench, but AC Milan are going to perform. I feel like he was the figure that they needed to give some motivation to their other players. And now that's established. They've played a few games without Ibrahimovic. And of course, you notice something is missing, but they can still deliver. They're still very effective. They won over the weekend with Ibrahimovic. They're going to be playing again without Ibrahimovic. um, And they think they're still going to deliver. Inter on Lukaku, yes, let's be honest. Lukaku has been key in many difficult moments. When Inter needed a goal, Lukaku was the man who delivered it. Not so much Lautaro Martinez, even though he does a lot of the work for Lukaku. Like their partnership is a lot like that. Lautaro works a lot in the shade. But for example, over the weekend, Inter had a very convincing win. 3-0 over Sassuolo. We're not the Sassuolo we are used to knowing. They are the second in the table. Sassuolo now third. Very convincing win. Lukaku only played at the end of the game. So safe to say that even Inter have a way of playing without their star. Now, Juventus, without Cristiano Ronaldo, they have won only one game. The Italian media will tell you that it's two games, but they forget that one of those two games was a 3-0 win awarded by a court, and so it's not a win, an actual win. And the key player, besides Cristiano Ronaldo, has been Morata, Alvaro Morata. So ever since coming back to Juventus, and I did say this at the beginning Mm -hmm. of the season, that it would turn up, I have a feeling now that Pirlo looked at the squad or the management looked at the squad and they were both like, okay, man, we need some goals. They got to come from somewhere. We need some goals. Cristiano Ronaldo cannot do it all. And so who do you get? A reliable striker who knows the team, who knows the city, who's already lived there. Well, ever since coming back to Juventus, 12 games, nine goals and two assists. He has scored in all UCL games, but one. The game Dinamo Kiev versus Juventus, they won 2-0 a Morata race. Against Frank Varosh, the game they qualified with, they won 2-1 and Morata scored the winner. Against Benevento and Crotone, Juventus tied 1-1 and Morata scored the only goal in both games. But then there is also something about the attitude of Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo didn't travel to Benevento over the weekend. Now, when a player starts picking 
what games to play and what games not to play that becomes dangerous. It becomes dangerous, especially if 